Hello guys, welcome to the video, I hope you all are well. Today's video guys is for the Shadow Golem Slayer build guys. My god, this thing is absolutely disgusting. It's definitely my favourite build so far. Still full summon the build guys, we're concentrating on the golem damage on this one. I'm already seeing 700 million damage already guys on the golem rotation, which is insane. It's nice and lazy, it will do all the content in the season four guys absolutely everything. uber lele pit 100 etc etc man once you master work your gear up uh i'm not master everything up yet far from it but i've already hit 750 million damage guys on this rotation already and um it's a lot of fun it's very lazy as well do all the hell tide uber lele fancy everything man it's really good and also auto heals also generates so your uh, barrier for you as well on hit now which is insane and um very lazy guys very very fun that's the main thing it's really really fun and uh, we can reset our cooldowns, guys, just like that. Unfortunately, people have discovered this a little bit now, so I can go public with it. But um, there's a way to reset your cooldowns super quick, guys, using that Potic aspect, which I've been adding to my build. I oh, don't know, but it's been discovered now. So uh, basically, a Potic aspect, guys, the pets, the Shadow Warriors, using this aspect, can proc the cooldown for the Crepify, which is really nice. You can get Army of Dead. And go them up super, super quick. Like, super, super quick, yeah? So, uh, let me quickly show you guys the rotation. We we'll go over the gear and stuff, yeah? Okay, so, uh, just curse the enemy. And what we're waiting for is have 10 stacks of Blight. And 5 stacks of Corpse. You see it? So, uh, these two here. Once these, this is on 5 and this on 10, that's when your damage is at its peak. And your damage number will go through the roof, yeah? So, curse. Pass Corpse Explosion. Just speed this up a little bit. And then cast your ultimate and then tell the golem to attack. Yeah, it's a bit hard to see because there's so many damage numbers there, obviously, but. It will crit for absolutely ridiculous damage, guys. Like crazy damage. You can see how fast we're resetting our cooldowns here. Look. See how fast we're resetting it? So let me do that again, yeah? Cast my ultimate. Bang. Look how fast everything's recharging. Bang. Bug or feature. I don't know. Does it need a nerf or a fix, personally? I was saying no. Well, that's what you got to do, guys. Really easy. Well, really, really easy, man. Once you got the 5 and 10 stack, if you slow down the footage of this video, you'll probably see the big numbers. It's a bit hard to see all this craziness, man, but, you know, I've had this guy up to about 750 so far. It's about 750, so it's nuts. So, uh, yeah, the rotation is very easy, yeah? So, once your uh, Shadow Black stacks go up to about a 10 from here, because your pets are proccing this, and your Corp Explosion stacks go to 5, that's when your damage goes through the roof, okay? And then that's when you cast your ultimate, and then you Golem! <laughs> and the Golem will rush in there, guys, and just go... Bang! Just blow everything up. Right, guys, so uh, barrier generation, yeah? Okay, so I've now changed this build. We're still using the Scythe and Life on Kill that turns into barrier with Temporary Pants, which is really, really nice. But we've made it so it's actually passive now with any damage in the build. Just simply by putting life on hit on one piece of your gear. I've opted for my ring here. My ring's not rolled right. Yeah, I need to get a better one. But I've got life on hit. That life on hit, from the pets, the Shadow Corp explosion, everything I do turns into barrier, guys. So look, watch this. I've got no barrier. Look, my pets will start attacking. Watch my barrier go up. There we go. Automatic barrier, guys. Look, there's a thousand barrier. So you always got barrier on all the time, man. And it lets you just run walk through the content so much easier. We can speed this up a bit, obviously, by, you know, doing corp explosions and things like that. And look, there you go. It just flies up. So you have automatic barrier generation in this build all the time. All the time, man. As soon as you hit that maximum life, guys, you know, it's going to heal you. And once it gets you 100% HP, it's going to give you barrier. It lets you just breeze through the game. It's really, really nice, okay? So try to get your temporary pants, hopefully, with 80% roll, which is the maximum, okay? This comes from Lord Zeer, guys, the uh, big vampire boss. And that way, eventually, we're still going up. <laughs> Let me just speed this up a little bit. There we go. Rawr! There we go. Speed this up a little bit. It's still going up. My God. Plus mine's 80%. It's 80% of my current HP. So now my barrier is sitting. It's still going up. 18,000 barrier. It's awesome, isn't it? <laughs> still going up. Just speed this up a little bit more. Rawr! So you want lots and lots of attack speed in your pets, yeah? There we go, so with 26,804 HP, guys, I can have a barrier going up, always up to 21,000. So if you use HP potions as well, you can make this go up even higher, okay? So if you use uh, Elixir of Fortitude, bang, here you go, we've got 32k HP now, and the barriers go even higher. If you've done the quest, guys, for the Elixir of Anti-Venom, this actually stacks with other potions, bang, and now I've got 32k HP, and my barrier's going even higher and higher and higher. 
I'm not ready yet. It's a really cool way of just, you know, just blasting through, man. It's great. And there you go. So now I've got 25k barrier guys that I can go up to with double potion stack. For the anti-venom potion guys, you need to do a quest, by the way. Just do a Google, do the quest, and you can start crafting this potion for Angel Breath. Lovely. And there you go, man. So that's how the, uh, the stuff works. All right, there, guys. So uh, let's go over the gear, yeah? All right, guys. In the helmet, we are using Apophic Aspect, okay? So Skeletal Priest empower your Skeletal Warriors, okay? So the Skeletal Priest is when you're at maximum pets and you've got a body on the floor. And when that Priest comes out, which is done automatically for you, by the way, um, it's triggering this aspect, and it's actually that aspect when you decrepify the target, the Shadow Warriors are hitting that target, stunning it, and for some reason it's procking the cooldown from decrepify, which is really, really nice. Okay, so the more lucky chance you got, the quicker you reset your uh, ultimate and your golem, which is really, really nice. It is a bug. Personally, like I said earlier, I don't think it needs a fix, you know, but it's just quite nice. If, Billy, if Barb's gonna run around and punch for 100 million of damage for just bash, I think this should be allowed in the game right now, okay? So yeah, guys, so Skeletal Priest, empower your Skeletal Warriors, proc your CDR, once the crap provides on a target, and it has a chance to stun, turns your damage into shadow. We want to do shadow pets on mages and warriors because we want to pluck the blighted aspect on our weapon, okay? So we get an extra 204% damage buff, guys, for 6 seconds when shadow blight has gone off 10 times. This happens very quickly because of attack speed of our shadow mages and now shadow warriors as well. And of course, shadow corp explosion as well, all going off at the same time, so... um. That way I have plenty of uptime on this huge damage buff, man. So I mean, that golem go bang. <laughs> it's very, very nice. Just like guys, I'm using hard and bones for the damage reduction, as always. Between you and the pets, really useful. The gloves, guys, I'm using commanders aspect here. So we imprinted. Uh, well, Army of the Dead, so our ultimate, which goes up really quickly, is active. You and your minions gain 100% increased damage and take 90% reduced damage. So um, it's an absolutely fantastic thing to have. So you pop this on, my guys, and your golem goes into insane mode for a while. <laughs> Brilliant. Temporary Bites, guys, drops from Lord Zier. Okay, gives you maximum life. Potion drop rate is actually very underrated on this item. Because uh, when you do luck hit chance, guys, and all that. Actually, no, it's just a basic drop rate potion. Um, it just drops on the floor, so you just get tons of potions. While you're running out, you never run out of potions with temporary. It's great. It gives you extra healing as well, and of course, lucky chance of heal. And then, of course, the barrier, guys. I love temporary pants. This thing is so, so good. But the most important stat on this, guys, is the main effect itself. Try to get one that is 80%, okay? Because the higher that is, then the more barrier you're going to generate on your uh, on your, on your bar. Boots, guys, I'm using a Cult of Dominion, obviously, for the extra plus two necromancer pets for skeletal mages and skeletal warriors, as always. Their weapon guys, like we said earlier, we're using Shadow Blight with extra damage bonus, and uh, we've got the blue gems in there for extra vulnerable damage. We can use CHD. Okay. In the description of this video, guys, there's always a stack guide to Mobilitic, so you can have all the perfect gear rolls. So you have to come back to the video. Lovely. For Amulet, guys, okay, so we've got Frenzy Dead, okay, so Frenzy Dead, so you and you and your minions damage uh, basically gain a massive attack speed buff. We need this to proc Cult Leader in the Paragon board. The faster your pets are attacking, guys, and procking that cooldown, the faster your ultimate's going to come back up as well, so. Attack speed, attack speed, attack speed on all your gear, man. Like your gloves, your ring and stuff. I need to roll my damage percent of this ring to attack speed, but it's like 4 million god of reaper right now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, hunt around, okay? Lovely. Also, guys, I've got amplified damage on this as well to make my curse hit harder. And that just increases our damage massively, which is good. Definitely, guys, 100% get Hellbent Commander on your amulet as well, because the damage increase from that is absolutely insane. When you're close to an enemy target, this extra damage, guys, just just goes through the roof, man. Just goes through the roof. So 100% can help it come on that amulet. And last that, guys, up to you, man. At the moment, I've got intelligence on this. So um, when you're masterworking your gear, you want to be hitting Hellbent Commander on your amulet. Okay, it's really, really important. For masterworking your gear over here as well, like your, uh, for, just for DPS, yeah. Um, for those that know, you can, when you're masterworking your gear, your uh, tempers can crit as well. So, for instance, when I redo these gloves, I want my masterwork and on the fourth craft to hit golem damage, hopefully two or three times. And then we get a massive spike in damage. Same for the weapon as well. You know, I've got one roll on attack speed and one roll on the golem at the moment, which is really, really nice. But if I want, I really just want it on golem, you know, and that way that damage will just go through the roof again. Okay? We've got golem damage on the amulet here as well. So, uh, Hellbent Commander or golem damage we want here. Preferably Hellbent, I think. But to go make this build, guys, super, super lazy, as always, is Ring of the Sacrilege. So automatically raises your skeletons, that's Corp Explosion, and Tendrils for you. And also procs the uh, Apophic Aspect for you as well. Okay, so once you have maximum pets, it will automatically heal your pets and buff their DPS and proc 
a perfect aspect as well. So when your pets are attacking a decrepified target, they're proccing the cooldown from it, which is really cool. So um, try and get a high lucky chance. Ring a sacrilegious song if you can. And when you master work it, hopefully crit the lucky hit chance. Okay? And that way it goes off even quicker. Such a great ring, guys. I love it. Then, guys, a ring of animation here. Okay? So uh, our minions get an extra 40% damage bonus. Okay? And once again, we've got golem cooldown and golem damage on the ring. So if it was master work in this, I would go for the golem damage. Okay? Well, I've got a bit of cooldown on the amulet as well. Not that I really need it right now because everything's resetting super, super fast. Brilliant. Book of the Dead, guys. Uh, Skeletal of Warriors Reapers to, chance, to give us a chance to get uh, corpses. We've got infinite corpses in this build, so you always got corpses for time. This is currently bugged. We're actually getting the cooldown as well at the moment. So we get a three second cooldown from this and the carve at the moment. Blizzard will probably fix it at some time, some point, guys. But even with this, that doesn't matter right now with the apothecary aspect. We get lots of cooldown. So uh, yeah, just put on Reapers, guys. Get those corpses coming in as always. Then, guys. Now, I've been testing this a hell of a lot, okay? Now, Shadow Mages, they do a piercing bolt that goes through the target. This helps prop Blight and Aspect, okay? Now, the this one here will proc Blighted Aspect a little bit faster, maybe a second or so. But honestly, I would just leave it, guys, on the first rune itself. You deal 3% increased damage for each Shadow Mage, yeah? So, um, Overall, I'd say this gives you better DPS because uh, you're going to get 15% damage buff from this. You know, one second difference for Blighted Aspect. Eh, you know, that, that's fine. You know, we're setting everything super quick anyway. So uh, definitely keep it just on the 3%. That way everything's doing damage, guys, not just for the mages and all that. You get 3% increased damage for each active ceremony, so that's buffing the golem as well, yeah? Nice. But like I said, if you want faster Blighted Aspect procs, you can use the Shadow Bolt. But honestly, I think it's fine. But as long as you've got lots and lots of attack speed, on your gear. So like for instance on the weapon now I've got 35% here. You know, we've got attack speed here, attack speed here. You can even attack speed on the ammo if you wanted to. You know, those pets baseline attacking so fast, they're proccing blighted aspect pretty quick anyway. Okay. Lovely. And guys, golem, of course, man, the blood golem. Blood golem is king. And go to the second ring there, guys, where they gain 25% damage reduction and 50% increased damage. If you guys are struggling for damage reduction, you should be fine in this build. But if you are struggling, you can change the rune down to uh, Blood Golem absorbs 30%, guys, of the damage you would take, which is massive. It's absolutely massive. <laughs> so if you're playing hardcore, put this on, guys. With all the barrier generation. Oh, oh my god, so good, so good. Okay. You can't use the other golems, guys, but obviously this one here on the second one, this is the one where it does the big damage. You want to hit those billions of damage, and it will do that once you master with the gear up. Um, use the second rune instead, yeah. For general farming, guys, like World Tier 4 stuff, like doing Helltide and all that, personally, I actually quite like using Bone. Okay, I like quite like using Bone, let's use this rune here, so when he gets hit, he actually does an AoE spike thing, which one-shots the monsters, okay? So, for Helltide, use the Bone one on the second rune. Everything else, guys, like pushing Pit, Doing harder content bosses, things like that, Uber Duriel, Top End and the Diary, etc., etc. Use this one, man. And uh, for just the massive damage spike. And this again, like I said, if you want damage reduction, pop over to the uh, Blood Code, put this your 5% damage reduction. Brilliant, man, brilliant. Right then, guys, so skill tree is last. Okay, let's go through this as well. Okay, guys, so two points here, bonus points. Doesn't matter what you take, just anything. Just take two points, just unlock here. And then we have to take one point somewhere. I just stuck it on Living Energy for just a bit of essence, because why not? Then, guys, max out Huge Flesh, so on Lucky Hit you have a chance to quarry uh, corpses, okay? Which is really, really useful. Especially on boss targets. So somehow, say all your pets are died, you're not generating skeletons anymore because your skeletons are dead. Somehow, this is your backup to keep the corpses coming in so you can get your pet army back up and running as soon as possible. One point, guys, in Corp Explosion, over to the Shadow Corp Explosion, okay? So this is blocking loads of shadow effects, blighted aspects, stuns, and things like that as well. Because once you take it, it's got a chance to do the stun as well, which is great. Then over here, guys, the Skeletal Warrior Marshal. We are still pumping... Skeletal Warriors and Mages, even though this is technically a Golem build now, because we want that extra life on the pets, okay? So if you take the points out of this, your Mages and uh, Warriors would actually die quite a bit. So definitely still keep the max out. They're still doing good damage as well, which is really nice. And um, But obviously the main damage rotation is from the Golem now. But yeah, definitely pump this up though, because you still need them to stay alive, which is important. Okay, then. So uh, then, guys, one point in Grim Harvest for a little bit of essence gem. Don't really use any essence in this build, which is great. It's more for just getting to fuel by death. So as we all made corpses, exploding corpses, guys, you get an extra 9% damage for 6 seconds, yeah? 
Brilliant. Okay, then. So, guys, I've managed to switch some points out now and, and maximize Death's Embrace. Close enemies take 6% more damage from you and deal 12% less damage to you. Because we have to be close for Hellbent Commander rotation to go off, um, this gives us even more damage and damage reduction, which is really, really nice. Brilliant. Maxed out Death's Approach, guys, with movement speed as well. Uh, amplified damage is this thing is for I've got a couple of points on the amulet. Re highly recommend to have points on the amulet on this because uh, an extra 24% increased damage to cursed enemies. Yeah, so you're cursing everything with a crap of fire, guys. And everything's taking this 24%. So good. The Cap of Guys does a slow damage reduction and stun. Okay. And uh, this thing is gold. And like I said, this is being propped by Apothic Aspect or for the Skin of Warriors man as well. So uh, when the mage pops off. It's resetting your cooldowns, guys. It's really good. <laughs> it's really, really good. Brilliant. Then, guys, we max out mages as well, because, again, you know, we still want the mages to do some damage, um, but it's mostly to keep them alive now for the extra 60%. They're still shred, like, well, tier 4, like, Nomad Dungeon 100 as well, even with this basic setup. It's good. All right, guys, Tendrils is next, okay? So, uh, Tendrils, guys, for the stun, slow, and snare, and vulnerable, as usual, okay? This is done automatically every uh, 8 seconds. From uh, your sacrificial ring of soul, man. That's great. As we're creating corpses, guys, we're uh, fortifying ourselves as well. So once you get maximum fortify, which happens very quickly in this build because the pets attacking so quick, generating corpses, and bang, you're fortifying, getting an extra 10% damage reduction for one point. Brilliant. And then, guys, in the shadow tree here, okay, it's a reaper suit for a bit of movement speed. And then down here for another CC. So we're actually doing another stun here as well for one second. This builds up the stagger bar and bosses and stuff like that. So you can stagger. And then, guys, max out terror. And gloom for the damage bonuses, okay? As always. Very, very nice. Then, guys, down here to the final trees. And then we're, of course, I'm maxing out Golem Mastery. Now, Golem Mastery is very, very important, guys, because it gives you huge amounts of damage. Increased damage to life of your Golem by 150%. So, on your chest plate, guys, when you're uh, master working on chest plate, you hopefully want to crit on the Golem Mastery. Now, I've got mine one on this particular basic chest right now. And I'm on plus three. Every one point, guys, of Golem, when you're master working, increases your damage massively. Okay, so every master work on four, eight, and twelve. One of these affixes will go up randomly, including the tempers. Okay, so hopefully you hit Golem Mastery multiple times. Hopefully, okay, and your damage will soar. Absolutely go crazy. It will fly from the roof. It's awesome. <laughs> it's really, really cool. So good luck, guys, when you're crafting, man. You can always reset your, your uh, master weapon as well for a bit of gold. Lovely, guys. Now, guys, just one point in Army of the Dead for the ultimate, okay? So this increases this proxy of the gloves aspect. Commander's aspect gives that massive damage buff. We do not need Prime After the Dead. We don't need the Exploded Skeletons. We don't need this. And we don't need the Rays either because we've got an unlimited corpses anyway. So just save yourself some points. Just put one point in there, guys. And boom, you know? And you're good to go. And what I did, I put the extra points into here now so we've got more damage reduction at close and more damage in close range as well to proc hellbent which is great then guys into the pet tree inspiring leader we max this out an extra 12 percent crit and 80 percent crit for the major for the pets as well which is great then uh hellbent commander obviously for the extra 90 percent guys max this out and get it on your amulet it's really important to get that we only need one point guys in death defense because for those that don't know a hundred percent of our stats now go into our pets so all our armor hp resistance like goes straight into our pets now so you only need, you know, need one point You'll be absolutely fine. I've already done pier 87, 90 now on this build. My pets barely die. So it's brilliant. And if they do die, we've got even a little bit of corpses. So it's fine. And then, guys, max out bonded in essence. Every eight seconds, your skeletal priest healing will heal you and your skeletons for an extra 60% of the maximum life. Yeah. So, uh, sorry, that doesn't heal, doesn't heal me actually because I'm not using blood gas. But, um, yeah, max this out instead because um, that way your pets just never die. It's really, really good. And of course, guys, last one, least is the uh, the Shadow Blight passive. Uh, Shadow Blight affects enemies for uh, two seconds every tenth time an enemy receives shadow damage from you and your minions. They are attacked affected by Shadow Blight and they're taking additional blah blah damage. Shadow Blight's damage is increased by 100% of your Shadow Blight damage over time bonus as well. So that's basically there, guys, to plock procs, right? Um, this aspect here. Okay, so once it's activated, boom. I know it's weird, you know, if those are new to Diablo 4. So, Tony, why are you not using this? Callan ZX, 3% attack speed for each pet, man. That's amazing. It is good, but honestly, this is way better. When you have this with this aspect, you're increasing all the damage of everything, including your pets, your golem, everything, man, by 240%. So use this instead. It's way, way better. Blizzard needs to buff Callan Edict massively, man, to make it more competing. Well, right, there, guys, last one this is the Paragon Tree. Right, let's go through this quickly, yeah. Like I said, guys, in the video description, there's a stat guide for all this. Okay, now, 
my wrist isn't quite capped. I really want to go to this side here to get the damage bonuses, but honestly, guys, got more than enough damage. <laughs> so save yourself some headaches to go to the resistance side here. Okay. And then, guys, activate Corporeal. Okay. 150% bonus to all the blue nodes within range. Okay. So these are bonused up. And then uh, you and your minions get an extra 10% increased physical damage. So the Golem guys, basically. And 1% movement speed for each active minion. So you get movement speed in this as well. Then, guys, it's a cult leader. We've activated this as well. So we get a massive damage bonus. Okay. So we've got enough uh, attack speed in the build to prop this to 100%. Get the massive damage bonus, right? They come down here, guys, and use Dead Razor as always. Extra bonus there to the minion stats. And then um, the extra 15% damage buff as well. That's absolutely huge, man. Absolutely huge mess of damage. Then, guys, over here into Scent of Death. Now, on the other previous version of the general build, I was using Wither, which worked really well as a secondary damage bonus. But because this is a focus golem build now, we're going to Scent of Death, guys, with an extra 15% damage increase or 50% damage reduction when close corpses are close. Uh, next, guys, is Control. Okay, so when you CC enemies, so when a boss is staggered or um, you just cast a Crepify normal monsters, Immediately, you're doing an extra 108.9% damage to crowd controlled enemies, and your minions get an extra 20% increased damage, guys, as well on top. So, you know, you can see where I'm going with this. Pets will absolutely <laughs> smash them to bits as well. It's really, really good. I picked up the HP nodes here, a bit of resistance and all that. Crit strike, guys, as always. Yum, yum, yum. Up into the next node, guys, which of course is Flesh Eater. Now, as we're consuming corpses, we get an absolutely whopping. 40% increased damage, guys, for 6 seconds. So when Blighted Aspect is on 10 stacks and it's ticking through and this is on 5, that's your window of opportunity to drop your ultimate, then tell your golem to attack at close range, okay? And just watch the huge, literally millions of damage, guys. It's just absolutely wild. Next cliff, guys, of course, is Essence for the Crit Strike damage, okay? Crit Strike damage, the increased damage, the enemies are not healthy, so you just get these massive one-shots. And increase crit strike damage, man. Absolutely brilliant. Love this thing. So good. The last one, these guys, of course, is uh, Hulking Monstrosity, man, for the Golem. Oh, yeah. I've managed to uh, max out all the damage nodes on this, guys, which is absolutely fantastic. Come up here. Grabbed all this good stuff. Frenzied Golem. Golem damage. Of course, we put Golem in here as well for the extra 154% Golem damage and 25%. Uh, managed to grab all this as well. So we've got all this good stuff. We've got extra damage here as well. And, of course, guys, Hulking Monstrosity. Your golem has a 40% increased maximum life and deals 100% increased damage. And boom, that is the Paragon Tree, guys. So far, this build has been super lazy, super chill, and super fun, and it hits like an absolute truck. I can't wait, guys, to masterwork uh, all my golem damage on this build to maximize it out and start hitting literally in the billions. And like I said, already I've seen 100, sorry, 750 billion on the test dummy. So, um, yeah, the sky's the limit right now. I can't wait to masterwork up. So, guys, again, with masterworker and all that, um, the most important things to master work and try to get the bonuses to hit on on the chest plate again is golem mastery. Okay, you want a golem mastery to be hit by your uh, master working again okay? because it's going to raise it up, and it's every fourth, eighth, and twelfth craft. Okay, and hopefully you can always reset anyway. And hopefully you just get golem mastery guys on your chest plate to max out for your gloves. You want the golem temper to be crit on that as well. So I hope you get free runs, guys, of golem damage. On your, on your master work, on your gloves, hopefully. Bring the golden damage up even further. Uh, for, the, for the pants, um, probably maximum life, I would say. Yeah, just try, master work and try to get the maximum life up as high as you can on temperature. Uh, for the boots, guys, I would probably say intelligence. Do intelligence or barrier gen if it'll be tankier, which is really nice. Love barrier generation, guys. All my tempers, by the way, because it makes the barrier fly up so much quicker. But yeah, for master work on the boots, go for intelligence if you can. And that way you just get even more DPS. For weapon guards, obviously golem damage, you know, that's the big one you want here. Medium attack speed ain't too bad either, but if you can get three rolls of golem damage on the weapon, because it's a two-hander, you get so much damage out of it. And hopefully, I can get the last one. For Amulet Master Weapon, guys, 100% um, Hellbent Commander. Second best would be golem damage. And then then Amplified, then Intel, or whatever other stat you want to use, okay? But honestly, just try to get all on Hellbent Commander. If you get all three rolls on Hellbent Commander, your damage will go for the roof, man. Sacrificial Soul Ring, guys. Uh, personally, HP or Lucky Chance for the Master working, okay? Because the Lucky Chance at the moment is giving us uh, cooldowns from Apophic Aspect via the Skeletons when the no target is decrepified. So if that's higher, your Ultimate and your Golem is going to reset super, super quick, okay? Then the last ring, guys, again, 
the tempered golden damage we want masterworks up as well for even more dps and there you go guys hope you guys enjoyed the video go check it out it's a lot of fun it can do absolutely everything in the game and it's really really good man i'm loving this build thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in the next video enjoy shadow golem slayer nice